What is up, Internet world, and welcome back to Accelerate. I'm Mike, and he's Ian, and today we bring you the Genesis GV70 Electrified. I've got 429 horsepower and 516 pound-feet of torque, but there's a boost button right here to bump that power up for 10 seconds to give me 483 horsepower. Yep, that's a lot of horsepowers. So, let's hit this boost button. Let's put this bad boy into sport. Ooh, I feel my seat tightening up. I am in boost mode. All right, this is a dual motor setup, so I have a front motor in the front and a back motor in the back. Put to the ground. Let's see what this thing can do to 60. Boosting for six, five. Oh my God, this is pretty good. And 3.84. I was like way past 60 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour. And I looked and I'm like, okay, when's the number coming up? And then my brain's like, oh, 3.84, that is the number. Okay, so I can do this multiple times, this boost button here to get that 483 horsepower, but I can only do it until the battery is above 25%, which makes total sense. So I'm gonna hit this button again, and it's gonna say right there, boost ready, and then it gives me a countdown, and as soon as I put my foot to the ground, it starts, even though I'm not moving. Go. Four, three, two, oh, 3.79. It's so funny, my eyes are like glued to this boost Timer, but not to the, the whatever, draggy. 3.79, ooh, that's quick. 3.79, dude, let me just absorb this for a second. 3.79. Let's try it again. All right, third time. And I always feel like every time we're faster, can we beat 3.79? Okay, let's just go over some cow dung over there. All right, flip the ground here. Can we beat 3.79? All right, flip in the other direction. Turn the AC off. Go. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Go, nope, floor. Now, if you want to watch the gas version of the GV70, I suggest watching this video. Now, say you want to buy a Genesis. How do you go about doing so? Well, when you show up to the dealership, they're actually just distribution centers. The salespeople don't get paid commission when they sell you a vehicle. They get paid commission based on their customer service to you. So they kind of have a hybrid version like Tesla does. You can order it online because they own all their vehicles. Or you can just walk into a store and say, hey, I want to buy one of these things. Now, it's not sold in every single state in the US just yet. And that's OK, because you probably have to just sort of swallow the price point, which is why I probably suggest watching that video, because this guy is fairly expensive. You see, it has a starting price of about 65 and change US, all the way up to about 75 and change US. That's a lot when you consider that the Audi Q4, the Benzito, and a few other select choices are way cheaper. To the front of the GV70 Electrified. This is exactly the same. It looks very typical Genesis, but the big difference here with the regular gas one and voila is the reverse G matrix grill. You see, this has these little inverted parallelograms on the outside because it signifies that it's all electric. There's no holes here, it's completely solid. They do have their front camera hidden very cleanly over here, and then here it's all open with your radar sensors, but the biggest change here is this. Nothing on this vehicle says electrified, except for this little thing that says G for G matrix. Check this out. That is where you charge your G70. Interesting, because everything else is on the side, left or right, but Genesis said, no, you pull up to your charging station and plug it in from the front. And in order to close it, you have to push it manually. It is not automatic. It gives you one of these. Now the GV70 Electrified does have a front frunk. So let's see how much room it has. Voila, it has a little case. You pull it up, pull it up, and that's how big it is. Not huge enough for a couple books for that read for your kids. 
Okay, so let's talk real world charging. So I took this fancy GV70 electrified to an Electrify Canada, not Electrify America, charging station. I picked the 350 kilowatt hour version and I walked up and I plugged it in. Now in the US, you get 30 minutes of free rapid charging for three years on your GV70. But here in Canada, we don't get that kind of style. We have to pay for it out of our own pocket. And that's cool because I will tell you that they say I can go from 10% all the way to 80% in 18 minutes. It accepts 250 kilowatt of power. Now I will tell you, I was at 18% and all the way to 80% took me 22 minutes, which I will say is about five minutes or so slower than what I was told I was gonna get. But I'm still happy with that, to be honest. I would say that to go from 10% all the way to 80% and even 22 minutes is still really, really good. So when you leave the charging station with 100% of battery, what do you actually get in terms of range? Well, Genesis says that you get 383 kilometers right here in Canada and across down south uh, American buddies, you get 236 miles. But with Ian driving it, and he is an absolute monster on the road, this man does not go one mile faster than the speed limit. He could only get 340 kilometers worth of range at 100%, and that equates to this number in miles. To the side. Now, if you look from front to back, you will see there is absolutely nothing on this Genesis that tells you it's electric. There's no blue signage. There's no EV design anywhere, with the exception of one small thing, and that is these white brake calipers. Even the wheels, being 20s as they are, do not scream electric in any way. If you start the front here, you do have your little parktronic sensors, go around the side of it, looks exactly the same as the GV70 in its gasoline form. You do have a little piano black on the bottom with your camera. And as you flow down and follow all your chrome, you will see the weakest part of the Genesis GV70 in my opinion. This is very, very ugly. But then they make up for it with these dual LED lights that flow right to the back. That is premium, and that is where your eyes should be focused on, along with where are the electric badges. Yeah, there's none. Now Genesis has tightened up its torsional rigidity because this is electrified. The other thing they've done is they've got rid of the exhaust pipes. Where are they, Genesis? Well, when you buy an EV, you don't get exhaust pipes. Matter of fact, when you buy a gas car today, you're lucky to get exhaust pipes. Now, what do you guys think about the back look of this Genesis GV70? I still love these lines. This part right here is obviously EV. Does it all fit together? I will ask you guys to comment below and let us know. And if this is the first time you've jumped on Accelerate, we really, really would appreciate if you help us on our road to a million subscribers. You see, we got one of these things, but it'd be pretty cool if we had another one on this side. The left side's full, but the right side, she lonely. Still haven't made a decision on if you like the back or not? Well, I'll make it easier for you. Come take a look at this third brake light that should be right here. It's missing, is what I first thought, until I hit the brake light and Ian got this on camera. That's amazing. And even this, there's a button here. I hit it and it opens up. What a great place for a button. Hmm, you wanna see how much room this thing has? Let's measure it up. How much depth do we have? Let's use our fancy dancy measuring tape and I have 38 inches of depth and width I have 40, just about 42. That is excellent. How about underneath this load floor or this shelf? Well, voila, I have your beautiful tunnel cover. And when I lift it up some more, I do have a little bit more tire stuff. We'll forget about that. It's just more of the tunnel cover. That can come up, you can put it on, and then you can hide all your gifts here. And you have this cool little plug. Now that is designed more for laptops, you know, just small, goodies or household items. It's not designed for a microwave. See, Hyundai and Kia actually have something called V2L. It's this little adapter you plug into the actual charge port on the vehicle. In this specific one, it would be in the front, but not this guy because it's not built on the same platform. It does not have V2L. You cannot plug it in and you cannot power a concert or a light. Now, sometimes this feature is overlooked, 
But in the Genesis GV70, I do have handles left and right. So when I pull it, the seats do in fact fold down. That is the 40 side. Let me show you the 60 side. I pull this and voila, it goes down. Let's see how much room we have in terms of depth to the back of that center console. I have just about 70 inches. If I'm really pushing it, nope. Can't get six feet. Can't get 72 inches, just shy. 70 inches all I've got in terms of depth. Not huge, decent, but not huge. And that's partly because the design of this GV70 is more like a sport coupe. It's not squared off in the back. It's very, very tapered on this design element here. Front seat of the Genesis GV70, electrified. Ooh, these seats are very fancy. So let's talk about them. They have this diamond stitch pattern up here. They are heated and ventilated. They are 14 way adjustable, including leg extensions, which you don't get on the passenger side. It also has some special feature called ergo seat. So when you're driving it for a while, it just decides after about 30 minutes for it to give you some sort of a light massage. Now it doesn't have massage seats, but they kind of move like seat kinetics on Mercedes Benz. Now when you put it in different drive modes, such as sport, it does also contour and pull you together to make you feel more sporty. That's cool with the seats. Whoops, let me hit this button off because it's making some noise. The other interesting thing is, forget the seats, but it's the seat position. These seats actually sit a little bit lower than the regular gas one because this is an electric one. They're trying to make it as close to gas as possible, but the seat position is just a little bit lower, which I do actually like. And also, there's no gap or hole under this center console. It's a complete center console. So let's start at the dashboard. The dashboard has a 12.3 inch 3D display. It's got a 14 and a half inch display for everybody else and that is the perfect size. It has CarPlay and Android Auto, of course. But the coolest part is when you have a passenger sitting in that seat and you wanna show them how you can drop this range, you simply just turn the fan speed up and you can see the range drop right away. Another cool feature about this GV70 Electrified is this ambient lighting that is not exactly hiding, but it's in this transparent piece or panel on the door panel itself. It's just so obvious and it's kind of ill-placed if you ask me. It's just cool at night in the day. It just looks awkward. And on the steering wheel, you have paddle shifters up and down. They are not for gears. They are for your regenerative mode. And there are four of them. The strongest essentially stops you right away. That is called eye pedal all the way up to sort of ease you until coasting mode. Moving up from the steering wheel, I do have my large heads up display. I do have a very clean vent line that splits the dash in two. Your HVAC controls are very easy to use. This is straight out of a Kia. You do have two rotary knobs on left and right HVAC controls. Again, very big buttons, auto off, and of course your front defrost. I have my sync button on the right hand side there. And then moving down to the center console, again, there's no space underneath like your typical EV because this is not built on an EV platform. When I push this button, I do have two USBs. I do have a wireless charger that simply slides or I can put my phone in there, very easy to use. I have all my different drive modes and terrain modes right here. And then I have my parking controls, my 360 camera. And then if you're wondering how to turn the volume up or down or have a tuning knob, well, there's no knobs. It's more of a rotary sort of slide over there super easy to use I do like it and then of course again some small buttons here and then you have your joystick aka your rotary up and downers you're more like your mouse stick I guess if you want to call it that and then how do you shift gears well same sort of deal you sort of turn this thing after you hit the brakes and you have reverse neutral drive along with your auto hold how much room and a center console I lift it up I basically have enough to put two water bottles and there is no charging piece except for a cigarette lighter or 12 volt plug. And that's basically about it. It does have a suede roof, but really it can totally be overlooked. I actually wouldn't have noticed this was suede until I really looked at it. Most suede roofs pop a little bit more, have a little bit more, I wouldn't say felt, but a little bit more turf to it. This is very, very shallow. So yeah, they could have probably skipped that. So let's take a quick dive into this 14.5 inch screen. You can see very clean time date radio station you're listening to. I can scroll over because this is a touch screen and you can see all the different menus that are available to you. But let's focus on one thing and one thing only because this is an EV, voila, I will hit EV. And that shows you with 
with 95% of battery, I can do 322 kilometers just the way the air conditioning is on currently, all the way up to 324 if I do shut it off. Now, when I turn the fan speed up, you will see that it does decrease, not as crazy as one would think. This is full fan speed right now, and I've lost basically 10 kilometers. All right, let's see the back is on this bad boy. Oh, seat belts, check these out. They're like cream, you know, like Wu-Tang's first album. All right, so sitting in the back here, how about headroom? Decent, decent for a five foot nine guy. I think you're five foot 11, you're in trouble. Hmm, interesting, interesting. The one thing I did like about it, I remember, the electric one also does it nice. I can recline the seat all the way back. I like that. I also like the white stitching or the cream stitching. Let's pull this down. I have two cup holders, fairly straightforward. I do have HVAC controls in the back with vents right here. There are no vents in the side or up. The only vents are right there. Thumbs up, at least they got them. I do have these little sunshades. And do I feel pretty private back here? I absolutely do. That's why the design's kind of like that. When I'm sitting back here, I do feel like I have some security here or a major blind spot. I'm not sure which one, but yeah. Okay, I feel ya, I feel ya. That's one thing that Genesis says that they've done is they've, they've insulated this car so much more so that people don't hear that EV whine that's been plaguing EV cars now for the last year or so. People find that whine annoying. Wow, this thing is quick. Hmm. It's insulated well, good. But the one kind of thing that I did notice is when I come to a stop, the brakes are really good. They brake right away. There's no none of this weird brake pedal feel that you get in electric cars. Wow, it's so quiet in here. Very, very, very quiet in here. Don't really feel how fast you're driving. That's very German. It just feels very solid. Like it's deafeningly quiet that I'm actually getting an earache from the silence. Anyways, performance aside, when I put it in sport mode, it is definitely stiffer. The steering wheel is definitely heavier. So I'll get out of sport mode there for a minute. I think sport mode is, let's put it in comfort. I like comfort. Comfort just very loungy. Very soft and loungy. This is so quiet. This is very quiet. This thing rips though, man, it rips. Now when I'm in eco or normal mode, what happens is that all the power is generally directed to the rear wheels. But when I'm in sport mode, the front wheels get a little bit more power to make this feel more all wheel drive. Now, personally, I prefer to drive this thing in normal mode. Sport mode is just a bit too aggressive. I find that the dampening, damping suspension is a little bit stiff. Not super stiff, but it just feels very luxurious. To, to get a sporty part of it just feels kind of odd a little bit to me. Everything about this is, feels luxurious. It does rip for sure, but I'm not really exactly taking this thing around corners. It just doesn't feel like that kind of vehicle to do so. It feels more luxurious, and that's kind of how it should really be driven. Now the gas version feels sportier, looks sportier, but in theory, because all the weight's in the bottom of this thing, this thing does track better, even though it does weigh almost 5,000 pounds, which is definitely heavier than obviously the gas version. It's just something about the weight on the bottom, man. Can't beat that. Um, okay, I'm getting passed by a 2005 Grand Caravan, cool. I will say, man, honestly, this is pretty pricey, if you ask me. I don't know. To be honest, the whole world's expensive, so I don't even know. But in terms of price, I'm the last person to ask. I know you're watching this channel thinking that I'm supposed to know what good prices are, but honestly, everything's so expensive in my mind nowadays, I don't know how anybody affords anything, to be honest. I don't know what this electric. I hope this whole thing freaking grenades and we go back to gas. Is that bad to say? Hope not. Yep. That's the review of the 2023 Genesis GV70 Electrified. Ah, oh, man, they better be giving some deals off this thing. But then again, you can't get them, like everything else that's sold today. So, good luck to you guys. And if you guys can find them easily available, let me know in the comments below. If you think this is overpriced, let me know in the comments below. And if you think there's better buys out there than this Genesis GV70 Electrified, let me know. You got it. See you in the next one.